Hey, micro students, this is Jacob Clifford. Now, the AP exam was on Monday. It's time to go over the few responses. I hope you did great. Now, they did throw a few wrinkles in there, but if you came to my live review session two nights before the exam, then you would have seen I definitely cover those concepts. All those ideas were covered in that session. Before I begin, remember, I do a contest with other teachers to see who had the best prediction, and it turns out we were all wrong. Now, the teacher that was closest was Tammy Riggers out of Washington, which is funny because she's the same one who won last year, so she knows what she's talking about. In this video, I'm going to go over the answers so you can see how you did, so let's jump into it. Overall, I think the few responses for set one were pretty easy. The first one started off with a monopoly. My predictions were that I think they give you monopoly, but it wasn't like that they had you draw it so for the first one i think it's gonna be at about nine points maybe a few more points than that but no less than nine it started off by saying draw a monopoly making a loss which you totally know how to do you totally got that one right you drew a monopoly price quantity with the atc here's where the points were first one would be one point for showing the demand and the marginal revenue and giving that quantity with the mr equals mc then another point for showing that price that's up to the demand curve and another point for showing the atc that's above that price they might also make sure that you have the atc hit the marginal cost at atc's minimum then go back up so they might take a point off if you didn't do that the right way and then the next point was the dead weight loss you didn't have to label the area of loss you had to label the dead weight loss which is that triangle right there so out of nine points four of the points were just this section alone which is pretty darn easy and the next point was also for the graph they ask you label the quantity socially optimal qs that is where the demand hits the marginal cost so if you label qs right there you got the point notice this is not where the marginal revenue hits zero it's not where total revenue is maximized it's where the marginal cost hits the demand curve. It's the socially optimal or the allocatively efficient quantity. Then they moved on and talked about a subsidy. They said, suppose instead the government grants a per unit subsidy to this firm, what'll happen to the profit maximizing quantity for bottled water? And it explained, you had to explain to get the point. The correct answer is increase. The quantity is increased. The reason why is because the subsidy, the per unit subsidy will decrease this firm's marginal cost. So it can't just be quantity up had to explain the second point here suppose new producers enter the bottled water market and now this firm continues to produce what will happen the demand will become more elastic less elastic or be the same as new firms enter the answer didn't have to explain was more elastic more firms means more elastic because there's more substitutes again you didn't have to explain you just had to say more elastic so it was a one-third chance in getting that one correct then the question pivoted and start talking about unit five questions with the labor market they said if the demand for bottled water increases what happens to the demand for labor and explain you said the demand for labor will increase because of derived demand remember if people want more bottled water then the business wants to hire more of those workers because those workers are more valuable those workers marginal revenue product going to increase because people want more of the product people want the product then businesses want the resource now i'm not sure how much they needed you to explain on this question but you definitely had explained to get the point another point here was if the government implements a new regulation that increases the minimum age requirement now i had to read that one several times i kept thinking it said wage a minimum wage minimum wage it's minimum age so now some people who are you know 16 17 18 years old can't work there the what's going to happen to the equilibrium wage in the market it's going to increase you had to explain why it's because there's less people available to work because now only people that you know are older are allowed to have the job. The supply of labor would shift to the left, decrease, causing the equilibrium wage in the market to increase. Now that's it for number one. Again, it's gonna be at least nine points. I hope you did well. Let me know in the comments below how you think you did out of nine. Now in free response number two, they gave you a supply and demand graph. They asked you some questions about price controls and trade, they threw in a wrinkle in there as well. But the first question is calculate the total economic surplus. Uh, where is it? You know, economic surplus is consumer plus producer surplus. So it's this area right here. It was $270. And then you had to show your work. If you don't show your work, you don't get the point. Uh, it was one half base times height is the triangle. So consumer surplus was $180. Producer surplus was $90. When you add them together, it was $270. That was the right answer, cut and dry. For B, they asked you if the government sets a price floor at $3, will there be a surplus, a shortage, or neither? I cover this in my review session. You always have to ask yourself, is it binding? In this case, it is not. A price floor below equilibrium is not binding, so there will be neither. There's not a shortage, there's not a surplus. The reason why, because you had to explain, was a price floor below equilibrium is not binding. The equilibrium price is not gonna change. It'll remain $4, and the quantity will remain uh, 60 units. 
So that's all you had to say, but you definitely had to explain to get the point. It was not binding price floor below equilibrium. It doesn't affect the market. In I, they ask, will Rushland export or input rice and why? You had to explain why. Again, this is a little different. Uh, the answer is they're going to export because at that price that's above equilibrium, the quantity supplied is going to be 50 bushels, even though 80 bushels are going to be produced. The quantity supplied is 80. So that 30 bushels of rice is going to be exported to other countries. Again, I'm not sure where they're going to take the points off if you don't explain it properly, but they do say you had to explain using numbers on the graph. So if you said they're going to export 30 bushels, you probably got the right point. Now, along with that, they wanted you to calculate the consumer surplus. And since the price is five, consumer surplus is right here, which is 125, which is one half base times height. You had to have the equation for that as well. So remember, if it says show your work, you had to show your work. For the last one, they said calculate the total revenue for these individual firms. Again, a little different. We don't want to see that question. You normally see total revenue when you have the cost curves. Well, we know they sold them for $5 each, and we know how many they sold. They sold 80 of them. So the answer was 400. It is the $5 price times the 80 units that producers sold. And remember, they sold some domestically. They sold some to other countries, but the total revenue they sold was $400. That's it for fair response number two. Again, I think it's at least five points. I hope you did well. Again, let me know in the comments below, what did you get out of five on free response number two? Now on free response number three, it's good old fashioned game theory. They gave you a payoff matrix, asked you a bunch of questions, a couple of weird ones, but let's go over them. Here we go. In A, they just ask you, can you read the chart? If uh, Bracelet chooses to produce silver jewelry, is choosing unique jewelry the best for Tony and explain using numbers. Again, you had to explain using numbers from this one. The right answer is no. Tony's Trinket should produce typical jewelry because they'll earn $21 instead of earning $20. So you couldn't just say no. You had to explain why. Again, just looking at the chart, you can see it's better for Tony's Trinkets to produce Typical, because they get $21. If they produce unique, they'd only get $20. Okay, that's it for A. And B, they ask, is Bittany's bracelet's dominant strategy to produce gold jewelry to produce silver jewelry, or do they not have a dominant strategy? Explain using numbers. The right answer is they do not have a dominant strategy. You have to explain that numbers, explain that concept. Um, sometimes they do one thing, sometimes they do the other thing. But again, as you can see from my explanation here, you had to have the numbers. They required it. So if you don't have the numbers in there, then you don't get the points. For the next one in C, identify all Nash equilibria for this game, that's a harder question because neither of these two firms have a dominant strategy. There are actually two Nash Equilibria. The first one is where Tony does the unique jewelry and Bitterly does the gold. The second one is where Tony does a typical jewelry and Bitney, Bitnally does uh, the silver. But you had to write that down. There's two Nash Equilibria. You didn't have to explain. You just have to say two. Here they both are. Now in part D, it was a little wordy, but I think you figured it out. They say if Tony Trinket's profits from producing typical jewelry increase regardless of what Biddley does, then what is the minimum amount in which their profit needs to increase for it to become their dominant strategy? For In other words, when will Tony Trinket always go typical, always produce typical jewelry? The answer is $6. And $6, again, you didn't have to explain it. You think $6, that was hit. You get the point, six bucks. Uh, because they need to get that uh, price for the typical jewelry to get above $15. In other words, at where, you know, Biddley chooses gold and Tony Trinkets chooses uh, typical, that $10 that Tony would earn, then he's always going to go unique because 15 is more than 10. And, you know, you got to get that, that $10 above 15. The right answer was six. You probably figured it out. That was the answer. The last point here, suppose instead that these two firms cooperated. They've never asked a question like this, but again, you probably figured out if they merge and combine, they want the most amount of profit. So they ended up with Tony doing unique and Biddley doing the silver for a grand total of $39. They basically ask you how much uh, money do are they going to make if they kind of combined into one firm? The answer is $39. It's the $20 plus the $19 that they would maximize their profit if they kind of became one firm. Now that's it for free response number three. Hopefully this was easy for you. Hopefully you did well. Let me know in the comments how you did on that third free response. Let me know if you have any other questions and I'll respond to you. If you also want me to make a video about problem uh, set two with free response number two, I can do that as well. Just let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching my videos. Until next time.